Hello, everyone. Let's wait for uh, four five minutes for everyone to join, and then we will get started. Hello, all. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, Guru. Let's wait for two more minutes. Uh, so I have seen that Sagarika and Roshan have joined. So let's get started. I will start by having a small presentation and then we will get started. So this is Salesforce Impact Hackathon, where we are creating projects for a cause that what is the power of Salesforce and what it can do. And for that, we are making presentations. And this hackathon is different because it's first ever Salesforce Virtual Impact Hackathon to showcase how Salesforce can be used for social good. And the theme is very different because we have created nine IPL teams and each Group has its own assigned mentors and volunteers, which are helping participants in bringing out their best. So we have the whole nine groups, which are in the hackathon. So the first process of YouTube and uh, like evaluating internally and then posting on YouTube has been done. 
and 20 teams came out and we were able to post about them in the impact cutting submissions and the SFDC Amplified YouTube channel. Now we are in the phase when we are judging those participants who are qualified for the YouTube submissions. So the team which is, I'm just admitting, yeah. So the team which is participating right now is Perfection from RCB, Donation Management Systems and Salesforce Developer Kit from Chennai Super Games. So I would like to welcome the panelists, Roshan Kotla and Sagarika. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we are really happy uh, to see you and that you are judging, uh, judging them. Uh, please take time to tell about yourself and inspire us. That will be really great. Hey, thanks, Riti. Good, good morning to you and good evening to others. Am I audible clear enough? Check my yes, check. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Sagarika is here. I think. Uh, Sagarika, do you want to go first? Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sagarika Sundamuthi. Um, I've been in Saints Post ecosystem for more than 13 years. Uh, and uh, I was even. Uh, as a worked as program architect with uh, Salesforce product company for more than three years, and now I'm director of uh, um, you know Omniplex Consulting, which is my own company, and um, yeah, that's uh, briefly about me. Thank you, thank you so much, Agarika. It is very nice to know you, and thank you so much for accepting the invitation to join. That was the shortest introduction of Sagar. Okay, I'll take longer here. Okay, I want to say hi to everybody and everybody say hi to me. And that's what it's, 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 it's not a session where you just hide behind and, uh, and just do the job and go away. So please talk to me, talk to us. Uh, okay, there you go. Thank you so much. Nayan. Hi, Nayan. Good to see you. Hello. Uh, hi, Rishikesh. Good evening. Mawson is giving thumbs up, but I can't see Mawson. Uh, is there anybody else I'm missing? The view is still hiding. Okay, only two of you, three of you can see. Janil, good to see you here. Uh, I spoke to you earlier on the LinkedIn. Okay, yeah. Mawson, uh, keeping in just the time. Okay, there you are. Mawson, good to see you. Hi. So, Hi. yeah, about me, I've been in the ecosystem for about 14 odd years, just a little more than Sagarika. We've worked together a long, long time ago at, at Infosys uh, as a, at, a very, at a very junior level, I, sh I should say. I uh, have working Salesforce experience across India, Europe, uh, US regions, uh, and uh, worked as uh, as six in six or seven different roles, whatever possibly we could have, which which gives a good good all round understanding of projects, roles, products, whatever you can imagine across these three regions. I've been uh, running my own firms or companies for the last five years. So you can say joined the entrepreneur bandwagon uh, about five years ago. I have a company called Magin. Sorry, I'll talk. And I also started something called the Salesforce Club. So if you see my LinkedIn profile, the, the bottom link right there is something which I'd like you to check. That's my understanding of my personal contribution to whatever I, I can do from my personal side. I also... Uh, personal side towards Salesforce, whatever Salesforce knowledge I've gained over this last decade and a half. And uh, I also lead the Salesforce Hyderabad group. Uh, and that is something I've, I've been doing for the last six, seven years. Uh, so I lead the group and I'm a public speaker. I've been on YouTube multiple times. I've given sessions all around the country and sometimes outside the country during the COVID period. So yeah, that's, that's the shortest. I love traveling. I've crossed in different countries. I like talking. I like singing. I would love to talk to each one of you in this session and beyond the session as well. So this is not just a two-hour connection. I look forward to being in touch with in which is all of you in whatever way possible. Like in, and and on that note, I want to congratulate and thank all the all the organizers, Smriti, Sudanshu, Ripesh, who else is his part of this? Janil. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm guessing everybody else is a participant here. 
as in as in as in uh, yeah as a participant but i think that those four names that i've taken are the ones who are organizing this so it takes a lot of effort things go right and wrong but uh, congratulations on coming to this level from where you started so give yourself a pat on the back and that's it for me for now uh, thank Go you ahead. so much, Roshan. And uh, I am so happy because we had conversations on LinkedIn and now I'm able to, we are able to connect and it's a good platform. So thank you so much for that. But I still couldn't see you. So I know it's too early in the morning, so I'll wait for that. Yeah, yeah. I just realized for Sagarika <laughs> also, it is like uh, she, uh, she's in Dallas. So I think it is she very early for her. She there, and... but she's in and out of uh, Dallas uh, and Bangalore. So she keeps traveling between India and US. Oh, so okay, okay. Yeah, I keep enough. frequently traveling uh, between uh, US and India. So currently I'm in India. So oh, nice. nice. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. It's for six forty four me. So that's why I asked. So I thought it's only for me. Okay. So moving on. Uh, as we have the two hour time slot. Um. So SFDC Amplified is the sponsor of this event, and that's why I want to call out. So thank you so much. Now it's time for participants to present. So I will be providing the access. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I see um, Swati is joined. Hi, Swati. Hi, uh, yes, yes. Hey, hi, Roshan. Yeah, you, you don't stop smoking. I'll, I'll yes, sir. Uh, so, perfection, please go ahead. I have given you the access to share the screen. Yeah, thank you, Smriti. I'll be presenting my screen. So, I'll keep my camera off due to bandwidth issue. Sorry, I'll turn it back on soon. Okay. Uh, is my screen visible and am yes. I audible to um, everyone? Before you start, I want to also put some ground rules. So 15 minutes presentation and then five minutes uh, demo, five minutes of QA. And uh, we can just go like five, seven minutes over. I will be putting a timer so we can have a complete check. Also, Roshan and um, we have given, Sangarika, we have given you a sheet, right? Where you can give the pointers of uh, uh, like uh, scorecard. So that score a bit on the parameter. Yes, yes, yes. That we can take it from you later. So right now you can point it on that, and we can come back on that later. So the, from here, please. So does this also include their introductions? Because I think it will help us understand the background or or the basics of who 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 are, who's presenting. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, take time. I think uh, within that time period, it should get finished. Uh, because we had the previous session, it was able to. So we are all good. Let's get started. Perfect. Please start with the interest. So hello, everyone. Okay, hi again. <laughs> Get ready to embark on a journey into the world of perfection, where we believe every pet deserves nothing less than perfection. I am thrilled to introduce you to our one-stop solution for our all furry friends. But wait. Who's behind the magic? Let me introduce you to a passionate and possum team. So, good evening, everyone, and good morning, Smriti. My name is Rishikesh Wak, and I have done my uh, BTEC in Information Technology from Sri Guru Gobind Singh Ji Institute of Engineering and Technology, Nanded. I'm currently working uh, as SD1 uh, at Elastic Teams Pune. And uh, I am 2023 pass out, and I have a uh, six month of experience in Salesforce. Yeah, excellent. Hi, Roshan, uh, Sagarika, and uh, Smriti. Uh, my name is Mohsin Mulani, and I am 2023 pass out, uh, holding a BTEC degree in CS. And I, I am in Code Rangers team, which belongs to the RCB group. 
and uh, i'm working in a startup which is located in pune its name is elastic teams and i've been uh, doing my job since 6 months over to nayan and i am nayan kaslikar working at the position of sd1 at elastic teams it's a startup in pune and my experience in salesforce is 6 months and talking about my education i completed my btech in cs in the year 2023 so enough talk let's see perfection in action now i'll be playing a promo video please let me know if you can hear the audio in that are you all able to hear the audio uh, not yet okay uh i'd like i would have to stop my you'll have to sing because the audio is not working you'll have to sing uh, the team will have to pick up for you <laughs> actually it's my voice with a cute audio behind that uh what do i do now yeah you can do a uh, control alt shift h there are like four keys combination you do what the window now okay Okay, I got it. Share sound. Thank you. A social media platform for pets. This is Timmy with her pet Rose, and this is Mike with Milky. Timmy can post anything about her pet Rose. Similarly, Mike can do so. Wow! This is the feed page. You can also share your pet experiences, and you can also get connected with a doctor. You can also shop pets' daily needs. And learn to train your pets. Also, notify if anybody needs help. This is the Paw GPT. Ask it anything. So in case you blinked and missed it we are perfection a dream team dedicated to the well-being of our pets we believe in creating a world where pets not only survive but thrive spoiler alert we are not just raising the bar but we are setting a whole new standard for pet care we have included many features and our first feature is feeds so you can share your cool images of your pet with the whole world here is a small glimpse of how our app is built and this is the feed section that we are showing knowledge is power so in this section you can explore our blogs for tips tricks and expert advice on pet care you can also share your experiences and here is a screenshot of a blog's page worried about your pet's health fret not our chat with doctor feature connects you with qualified vets instantly your pet's well-being is just a message away we also have a dedicated page to post about injured animals This is how it looks. Treat your furry friends to the best. Our marketplace is a heaven for high quality pet products because your pets deserve nothing but the finest. And here is a pretty screenshot of that. A well behaved pet is a happy pet. Explore our training programs designed to bring out the best in your furry friend. Obedience has never been this enjoyable. For all for all of you, this is the Paw GPT, the latest in pet pet tech, offering personalized in, interactions, understanding and companionship like never before. This is a secret weapon. For the tech enthusiasts among us, scan this QR code to explore our tech stack on GitHub. 
We believe in transparency and collaboration. Curious minds, this one's for you. Scan this code to explore our website and unravel about perfection. We are on a mission to make the world a better place for pets. Join hands with us in this noble cause. Together, we can create a positively amazing world for our furry companions. Next up, we'll, I'll be sharing my screen to show you the demo part of perfection. Is everybody with me? Uh, yeah, yes. yes. So, uh, can you all see the login screen? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So, this is our login page wherein a pet owner can log in as a pet. So, on behalf of his pet, if you do not have a login of your pet created, then you can click on the sign up button. Here, let's say we'll create an account for my pet dog, that is Jordan. Let's add a password. And you can also upload a cool picture of your pet. So I have a picture saved here. I'll upload that here. This is Jordan. And then we click on sign up. So let's log in now. As you can see here, Jordan has logged in. So as soon as we land on a home page, this is the feed page wherein all the feeds posted by other uh, pet owners or will appear here. And we can also post our pet speed over here. So these are few feeds. I'll just have a walkthrough. Feeds posted by Bruno. These are few posted by Lucifer. This is Ruby. So now I'll create a feed and show you how the pet owner can post his or her pet's feed. Okay, so we'll post this. Okay, so feed created successfully. Then click on OK. We'll go on feeds. And here you can see the photo that Jordan posted is here. Next up we have is profiles. So we'll go on profiles. So this page is basically to show how many users or how many pets have registered onto our app. So currently we have these many pets into our database. So we have all the pets over here. Next up we have is the news section. So the reason why we included the, this news section is to keep the pet owners updated. Here we have provided various categories. If you click on any of them, you will get news related to that specific category. Next up we have is chat with doctor. So any pet can get help with the doctors that we have provided here. So currently we have these three doctors and the doctors will only be provided with a login because those are the verified doctors. If I want to say talk with Dr. Saduke. And then I click on send. So from the other screen, I log in as Dr. Saduke and tell you what, uh, the other part of it. I'll just quickly see the uh, credentials of Dr. Saduke. Okay, got it.
Uh oh. Uh, uh, select the doctor section. The radio button. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go on to the chat with doctor part and then chat with pet owners and then we'll click Jordan. So here, hello, my pet is ill, please help. So the doctor can provide his expertise. So this is the live chat feature that we have included into our app. Next up we have is the blogs part. So here, here this is the blogs part that we were talking about. Here uh, people can also post their blogs related to the pe pet, you know, uh, if they want to share any memory of their pet or any expertise they want to share. So this is the blogs part that we created. So this is how individual blog would look like. Now we have Paw GPT. So over here, we have integrated the OpenAI API to provide pet-based suggestions. For example, give me 10 names for my dog. And I'll click on submit. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. So here you can see I got um, the, suggest the suggestions based on my query that I passed. So this was about our AI animal bot. Next up, we have Marketplace. So currently, this is in a prototype way. We can have what we intended to do here was to get all the things like food, shelter, medicines about the pet. If you click on any one of them, you will be redirected to any e-commerce website like Amazon Flipkart so that the user does not have to spend much time searching what all things are needed for a dog, cat, etc. Next up, we have is pet training. We have included the videos of training for dog or for cat. In future, we will also add other pets over here. Next up we have is Helping Hands. So this Helping Hands page is created to help the animals that are laying on street or having some disease and there's nobody to help them out. So what we can do is we can just click on this button, post injured animal information. Then I'll write animal information that it needs help. Also, I can provide the address that where I found the dog. And then also my phone number if I want to. Also a photo that this is the pet that is injured. And then I'll post the info. So this is how, this was the pet that we posted just now that the address is this and the description is it need help. So what basically people can do is they can refer to this page and check if the pet is near them. We can just take the phone number or take the address and reach to that pet for help. Next up we have is the contact us page. So over here, if you have any query related to our application or related to any pet or something else then you can fill in the information and click on submit now we have a profile section wherein we will have the post and blog of that particular user i'll give you a nice explanation from coco okay yeah so all the feeds that the pet owner has posted about the cat will appear here and the blogs written by that will appear here. So this is the person profile page. Now we will log out. So yeah, this was about perfection. Thank you. Okay, before anybody. It was a speak, wonderful uh, presentation, <clears throat> Ryan and team. Thank you. I, I, my first question is. Uh... Whose whose dogs are those? <laughs> uh, or who is the dog person? Who is the cat person? Your team. I am a cat person. 
Therefore, you could see many cats over there. I thought so in the beginning, but at a later point, when when, when Jordan came up, uh, I was I got confused. Nice. Okay, I'd say great beginning. Like like I think very structured presentation. To be very honest, uh, it was very clearly function first. So. Good, good functional perspective of, of whatever you wanted to show through the app. Uh, and on the same note, I'd, I'd like to add a small improvement. I think uh, it could have been cut down a little bit on the like the explanation of functions because, because you were anyways going to show the details of the functions later. So it was a little bit repetitive in the beginning. Very small improvement. I'm not, I'm not, I'm nitpicking. It's, it's not even a drawback. I'm just saying it can take it to the next level. Uh, obviously okay uh, so i'll tell you some good things first while sagarika if you have any questions you can start off with i was taking notes when you were speaking uh, in terms of i have a, okay, good things i've already said it so i have a question here how big or how big is this a problem how big is this a problem if you are as a pet owner i don't know how many of you got pets here because you said this solves a lot of problems for you know getting help for doctors, marketplace, getting AI help for your pets issues, um, and every other feature that you mentioned. I'd like to start with the problem statement. Like how big is the problem statement? How did you even think of this problem? Okay. Actually, like as we started in our presentation, it's a one-stop solution. So we are not doing something unique, but we are integrating all the things in one platform. Like you can see, uh, starting from the feeds, uh, feed section, like other platforms, which we mentioned in our PPT had features, but they didn't have features where doctors could directly interact with pet owners who are seeking for help. So th that's the main point where the doctor, some doctors, veterinary doctors who want to contribute to the society in terms of like helping uh, helping the pet owner for free, let's say free. So the, uh, that problem statement, like we are targeting that segment first. Second thing is we saw about uh, posting the injured animals. So we didn't saw any platform where there could be any platform where the injured or some abundant animals could be, information could be uh, stored somewhere like and others could uh, see it like who needs help so that was the other thing third is like as we know this is an ai era so that was a small portion of our project where we tried to integrate the ai into our use case uh, with respect to like uh, pet care so that was the third part Yeah, I mean, I also had a similar question. So how did this idea start? Like what made you guys, uh, you know, uh, build this app? You know, again, it's going back to that uh, pain point. What is that pain point that you saw that you really wanted to solve that problem and come up with this app? I know you mentioned about, uh, you know, you didn't find an app where you could, um, you know, post injured animals. Um, but other than that, um, you know, what was the I main uh, reason behind this idea with this app? You know, because this is a section on which nobody really talks about people, human beings, they always focus on them, them, themselves only. We all know this, right? So, I mean, this was a thing which we had to do. And we got a platform to, you know, showcase that we could do something in that, in this criteria. So, yeah. Okay. I, I think, yeah, uh, I can make a very con con uh, conflicting statement there, but I'll make it at the, at the end. One question about the UI there is, so you showed what you showed uh, and the demo was all desktop. So do you, does it also work on mobile equally? Is it built? Uh, uh, is it is it compatible with mobile as, as good as what you showed here? Not that good. Like responsiveness isn't handled here fully. Okay. But it functions. 
functionally it, func it functions but the responsiveness is not good. all right no worries um so the other thing was a small improvement section again when we upload you all in the instagram era the, whatever we do i think it should go back to the home page by default if, 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 if you can take that as a feedback again uh, because you had to go back to the feed after you upload which is not so user friendly if you if you look at right when you upload it you want to instantly see it on your feed the way you do it on instagram linkedin whatever pl platforms that we see around us okay so i think you <clears throat> to, to to just conclude on what sagarik and i was asking what you said is it's it's probably not a problem statement you're trying to put them together at one place and that is the actual problem statement you're looking at more than saying hey this doesn't exist and this is the first time we're bringing it except maybe a chat gpt or, or something like that or, or a last dog problem okay uh, any sagrika next do you have anything yeah and um, you know what what is the reason behind choosing salesforce uh, as the plot platform to you know uh, build this app it's is it just that uh, you guys are working in salesforce platform and thought that uh, you know we should just use this platform and build the app or how did you come up with that idea same question no, why salesforce here what is salesforce doing here actually we have also worked with other platforms like other tech stack sorry in our internship period so we know how it how hard it is to integrate the back end the database and all things but here at salesforce there is a one stop solution we have a library lwc aura to build the front end at the back end side we can say apex like writing the queries and all and we have s objects like a salesforce objects where we can store the information so there is a one stop solution for it also the contact us form which we uh, integrated like uh, which we have in our website the all the queries are stored uh, through web to case in our case object so all the solutions are present at one platform only so yeah that's why salesforce okay i think you answered the tech stack there i wanted to have the same question like what all have you included and you... so is it more of aura or lwc just just out of curiosity for, for lwc right. lwc all right okay um yeah, I think a few suggestions from my side. I mean, it's nothing, again, there's no pointing out or anything. It's for your app's betterment in future. Like um, now when the doctor logged in, like you had to go to, um, you know, Jordan's account to see the message, but a doctor would not know that who who has actually messaged or reached out, right? It, should, it, it is something that should pop up for the doctor that, you know, these are the message waiting for your attention. Like, and also I think, see, you, you are in a prototyping stage. So you have very few feeds and very few profiles, but as you scale and, you know, you um, get a lot of adoption from so many users, it will, it, it becomes very, hard so you just need to work on that organization part and maybe uh you also mentioned Nayan you mentioned that uh, anyone in the world can see um and when it comes to like say injured people you you want to uh come up with some location based um kind of uh, messages right if there is an injured uh, animal in Nagpur then only uh, people who have logged in from Nagpur see that instead of like someone in uh, Europe sees that and cannot really act on it right so these are just little things uh, just for your app um, uh, otherwise I mean uh, where you guys are and just at the start of your career you have come up with the idea you have built the app and you have brought it this long uh so that that's all like uh like super i would echo all those yeah, thoughts in the interest of time uh yeah yeah i was about to mention that we, we are well around the time Maybe it's like, so i was just saying i would echo all those thoughts uh, congratulations on, on what you've brought up in with, with your experience, with your understanding. Adding AI is cool. The images, how you started the presentation, uh, how you put up that, I think I think I would really give a double thumbs up for all of that. And what function features are you talking about? Yeah, we can always keep adding to that. So good job, uh, perfection. We'll, we'll chat more about it. 
I think uh, senior LinkedIn invites. Yeah, let's go, Swaraj. So uh, yeah. So, uh, Smriti, are you there? Yeah. Oh, this yes, is Smriti. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, really good presentation. And we can move on to the next one in the interest of time. So the next one is donation management systems of Chennai Super Kings. So let's go on that. Uh, Chennai Super Kings, are you there? Yes. 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 Yeah, please yes. go ahead. Yes, yes. Are you able to present? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Is it my screen up, Smriti? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, JP, please make it uh, full screen. Okay. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, first uh, introduction. Uh, my name is Swati Putanwal, and I'm currently working in uh, Bruin Technologies in uh, Hyderabad, and I have uh, total 10 months of experience in sales. Over to you, Mohan. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Mohan, and I'm working in Salesforce Technology, Bruin Technologies in Hyderabad, and I have experience of six months in the Salesforce domain. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jay Prakash Kapse, and I am also from Prudent Technology and Consulting. Um, I have uh, one one point five years of experience in Salesforce domains, and I am from Nagpur. Yeah. Hi, Mohan Swati, Jay Prakash. All the best. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Roshan. Thank you so much. Uh, so yes, uh, we have made uh, this project donation management system. So, what exactly is donation management system? So uh, when I personally want to donate uh, anywhere, so I want, I look for trust that my donation or money, whatever I am donating should reach, should actually reach the needy people and not to someone who is making a business out of it. And on the other hand, there are so many NGOs working for social causes and they need funds to, uh, for, for their welfare projects. So donation management system is here built by team MSJ. We are connecting donors with the NGOs. So uh, an, NGO is, an NGO is a non-profit organization that operates the independent, independently of uh, any government, typically the addressing the social and political issues. Uh, a donor is a someone or something that gives the donates or presents something. So the main objective of our platform is to provide a transparency and efficient donation process between the donors, donors and the recipient, which are yeah, recipients are the NGOs. Yeah. Uh, JB, please go to the fourth slide yeah. or you not able to see that. Yeah. Is it visible? Uh, no, to me it is not, please. Oh, no, it's still on the first slide. It is on the first slide, yeah. Go to the fourth one. No, I mean fourth one only. Uh, one maybe uh, you can try uh, resharing the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Once. Uh... That's the age old method. Something doesn't work, just re re redo it. Okay. Yeah, and most of the time it works. <laughs> yeah, now it's visible. Yeah, go to the fourth slide. Okay, one second. Sorry. Uh, instead of the uh, fourth slide, can you do the slideshow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. That will be a be better presentation, right? Let's do Yeah. Yeah. So okay. these are the objects which we are using uh, in our project. There are five standard objects, donor, which is account, context, donation campaign, leads, cases. And these are three custom objects we are we, we are using, NGO organization, NGO request, and donation. So the main process will be happen between the four objects. Those are 
NGO and NGO request, donor and donation. So we are made, we are given much better relationship between NGO and NGO request and also in between NGO request and donation. But we are given lookup relationship between donor and donation because donation can be anonymous. Yeah, uh, after the page layouts, the over page layouts are we are well organized like this. So detail comes first after uh, followed by the related and active followed by related and activity. In the compact layouts, uh, we are added the number of uh, we are added the number of fields uh, and the necessary buttons here. Yes. Yeah. So comes to the profile. So in a cell for in DMS systems, uh, we are using the four profiles: system administrator, uh, donation management uh, system, and donor and NGOs. So one sec. Yeah. Uh, is it Excel sheet is visible? Right now, not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the system administrator has a profile. Uh, the system administrator has a profile assigned to the developer with all the with the all access. Okay. Uh, say similar to the donation management uh, has a uh, with all the access, but no setup access here. After that, uh, NGO and uh, donor has some limited access. They also doesn't have. Uh, but not have so setup access. They also doesn't have any setup access. Let's see. Yeah. So. Hmm. so we are using reports for a quick analysis of the of this process. So one of the the fourth report which is matrix report which is displays the amount of the amount that is required to the ngo and the amount they have received right now till now and one more report which displays the approval status of an ngo request account yeah so this is how the dashboard looks like we have displayed all the four reports here So these are the uh, all the tools which uh, we have used for the implementation of our project. Let me just take you through some of these. Uh, first is we have enabled the person account for storing the details of the individual donors, which we have differentiated from the organization donor. Uh, second, we have provided global action uh, for like uh, uh, creating a case. Uh, third. MFA, we have activated the multi-factor authentication for better security of our platform. Uh, for the approval processes, we have uh, provide uh, we have set up approval processes for the NGO request, which would be approved by the DMS platform. And then for the automation, some of the automation parts, we have set up record triggered flows are there and some lookup filters are there, which are doing the things. And after that, uh, we are also sending uh, email alerts uh, to uh, respective NGOs and donors, uh, like after making donations. So all of these things we are doing with this. Okay. So uh, here, uh, the after the donor donor uh, makes a donation, a donation received is the generated donation received is generated using a generate receipt button. So we generated the generate receipt button using the visual four pages. So here, uh, so uh, the donation receipt is look like this. There uh, we can put the donor name donate donated to amount and date. So these are the list of components we are using to make our UI. And we have used a total number of 15 components to make this year. Yeah. So yes, in the conclusion, uh, the issue which we wanted to resolve was that the donor needed uh, trust with their uh, donations or money which they are putting and NGOs uh, needed funds uh, for their welfare projects. So here with all with this project, we are reconnecting both the donors and NGOs and uh, solving both the issues. NGOs where can donate with the utmost trust to the platform and through the platform that money would go to the uh, respective NGOs which will uh, which will go for the social causes. Yeah. And 
Yeah, uh, Mohan, can you please uh, go for the UI? Yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Yes. Yeah. I think my screen is visible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is visible. Yes, yes. So this is the uh, home page that we have. And uh, here, uh, uh, let me just take you through. These are the uh, flips we have uh, used here for making the look of it. There are uh, five tabs which are uh, provided here. And uh, after that, we are providing uh, these uh, uh, images for respective, uh, uh, for representing the donors, NGOs, and for the uh, aura of it. And yeah, after that, there are uh, sustainable development uh, goals, which uh, are the goals set up by the United Nations uh, and uh, every one uh, individuals, businesses or countries, uh, all of us uh, have a duty for uh, doing this and NGOs, especially in this project, it was needed. So our platform is also striving uh, to uh, attain uh, to achieve these sustainable goals. And these are the prioritized six sustainable developmental goals, which we are trying to strive. So next is uh, this uh, bar which uh, we are providing here. Uh, the total number of uh, uh, donation which has been made on the platform would be represented here. This is a total uh, donation uh, till now. Uh, total number of donors are there, total number of projects and total number of NGOs. Yes. One please go to the, uh, yeah. This is the NGO uh, page. Here, uh, all the NGO related uh, things would be done here only. We can uh, create a, a record, NGO registration is there, NGO details if uh, uh, NGO wants to uh, see the details of it. So we'll make one uh, NGO, uh, we will register one NGO here right now. And on the page, uh, we have provided uh, uh, these uh, GIFs for uh, uh, related to what NGOs are doing. So for that field. And on the right hand side, you can see that uh, there is one for every uh, page, for every tab we have provided. If the NGO tab is there, then the NGO related uh, image would be there. And some useful information we have provided on the uh, page, uh, like what an NGO is or some useful information related to it so that they, uh, whoever is coming to it, they can just uh, get uh, a total knowledge or a feel of it. So this is a record, which we have, uh, we are registering one NGO here. So yes, this uh, uh, Roshan and uh, foundation has been registered on the platform now. Now, yeah, please go to NGO. Yeah, this NGO details would show if we want to see the details, then we can enter the email and mobile number and they can see the details of it. Yeah. Second is the NGO request. So NGO who have been registered here can make a request uh, for the funds, so for example, uh, any uh, for what purpose they need fund. So they can make respective request for that. And one NGO can make any number of requests here. So we are making one request here. So this Roshan Foundation we just made. Uh, Mohan, I just want to ask you one thing. Have you yeah. activ activated the flows before? Oh, no, I think, yes. I need to you, activate it. Uh, please do that, yeah, just once. This is now a real world demo. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, Roshan, what happened earlier was that in the first submission video, which we had to make, so that time we were testing and uh, our uh, uh, this is developer role. So our email limits uh, got exceeded. I talked to Smriti as well about it. So it's here we deactivated before it so that we can send it now. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, no, I'm just saying this is now a real world, sure. real world demo. That happens no matter how many years you know this, you'll still have this issue in the demo. By the way, yeah, a lot of time we forgot what deployment ship. <laughs> So it usually happens with me because I have the responsibility to do it in my org. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
by the way you created the ndu now are you, am i also getting get the money 12 lakhs yeah. there or one two yeah, one uh, yeah actually uh, act, the flow was not activated otherwise you have uh, you would have received uh, just now we will um, oh. just if, the no, other no, if, the email actually not the money yeah <laughs> i'll receive the email not the money i was asking yeah yeah, 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 yeah. okay okay <laughs> yeah i'm sorry <laughs> that's like yeah yeah you got it yeah yeah <laughs> Hmm. Ajay, let's say comes around. <clears throat> so all for yeah. So um, can you just uh, okay? Should we make one uh, and you uh, again uh, or? Okay, after mm. making, yeah, it's fine. It's yeah, after after making a request, he will receive yeah, the yeah. email actually. Yeah, it will. That other email will go. Yeah. So while that all that is happening, Swati, can can you, um, yeah, just let us know. Uh, it, I mean, again, back to the idea. Yeah. There, there are many such, uh, you know, websites that provide this uh, platform for donors and NGOs and all. So what did you find missing in the current, uh, you know, market that you wanted to come up with this uh, app? Okay. Or uh, what is so different that the users would want to use your app? okay uh, there are uh, two things i want to say that uh, the uh, the idea of it we have taken it to a larger level we have seen uh, the uh, web websites or ngos who are working currently uh, and they are into one direction or one domain uh, and uh, the either the ngo is the only their ngo website you would see uh, and they are only having their own websites and everything and uh, it is in one direction so the i would say that base is large here we are uh, taking all of the ngos either they are uh, environmental or uh, and we are providing different different kinds of uh, requests as well for example money is there they can donate anything and all of the types of ngos are uh, being registered here and uh, yeah and donors also can so all of the ngos can the uh, donors can get all of the ngos and all of the types of donations uh, which they can uh, provide second is that it is just not about the money donation it is also about the money donation as well as they can provide the goods and they can provide the medical donation and also service uh, services that if i am not if i don't have that much of a money to donate to somebody so even after that i can i can do some good work for example if i am a laborer Uh, doing some construction work so i can provide my service of construction in that here ngos for example many ngos are there who need uh, who have to build some home or something like that so they can uh, provide a request where they want service for the construction so laborers even can go there and provide their service for example 100 days of laboring labor is uh, required so they can provide their service they are available for 2 days so they can register here and come and register for just 2 days and they can even provide their service and for example we yeah. have list services as got, well you got it i mean the donation could be in the form of time or money yeah time or money yeah that's true okay also and, in the uh, sir, also in the cell force there are the some automated functionalities are there so Uh, in the selpur crm uh, we can automate the donor communications uh, we can sending the service form to them uh, donors and injured and all that stuffs we are using here so and so going are... back to what you said swati like about trust or credibility so how do you think um, that is being uh, like say i i am a interested donor right i come to a website um mm-hmm. so what makes me believe or trust i mean have have uh, do you guys uh, just create the platform to connect donors and ngos or are you 
planning to do any kind of validation that yes, the donor's amount is going to NGO. Like, wh how are you uh, like showing that uh, winning the donor's credibility? Okay. Uh... Right now, I would say that uh, for for the uh, authenticity uh, of uh, this, what uh, what is in place right now is that uh, NGO request. I, as I said, NGO request to whoever would come. The request from the NGOs would come. Uh, not all the NGOs would be uh, registered here uh, right away. Uh, the DMS platform would make sure that that NG, particular NGO is actually working and is a credible one. Uh, second, uh, when we are re registering the NGO, there there are every NGO has to be registered with the government as well, and they have their government registration numbers and everything. So we are taking that information from the NGOs as well, and we have in place the approval processes which we have placed here. That is for that use only. That if some NGO is registered here, like we registered just Roshan and uh, Foundation, and NGO request is made. They have to be uh, approved by the DMS platform. So approval will only be done after we are satisfied that that NGO is a genuine one. And after that, only that uh, NGO request which they have made would be available for donation. Otherwise, in donation section, that won't be visible even. After approving only, it would go to donation. So like that, we have provided. And uh, uh, in security, yeah, in security wise, uh, MFA we have done. Uh, so yes, and uh, uh, we have provided uh, the emails right now that uh, your donations are uh, being done and they can get a feel of it that yes, I have done a good work and uh, it is going to something like that. So it's basically free or um, subscription based? Mm -hmm. We are not implemented regarding any subscription like oh. feature. Okay. Yeah, it's you know, right? The Salesforce comes with the cost. <laughs> it's not yeah. free. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But basically, the authenticity part is not handled through the app. It's still a managed process by the DMS team, is what I understood. Yeah, that's yeah. A similar question, but what I, what I understand is it's through the app. We cannot find out if it's authentic or not because you're not collecting that information at any place. Yeah, yeah, but we can add that up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, it, it is something that uh, you would want to showcase in your app. Like, even when you are going out to the world, so going to socialize your app, you you must, um, you know, that should be part of your, um, you know, USP that, you know, what are you doing for that trust or credibility? Yeah, mm -hmm. you're saying that, but the donors are the one that need to, um really believe that yes this website is credible or um you know we can trust and make the donations mm -hmm. i'm just yeah, saying well, as a user because i have been there like when, whenever i want to make a donation whenever i land to a website that's the first question that comes to my mind okay yeah. i am donating like 500 dollars but yeah. is it really going to the needy people that's the first question i get so it is something that you definitely need to address. Like, even if you have addressed, you need to showcase how you're addressing. Yeah, I was thinking the same that we have implemented that, but uh, I think the satisfaction is uh, the satisfaction for the donors is needed. Yeah, that is the thing. Yeah, uh, guys, so I think uh, we are around, almost around the presentation time. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Mohan is demoing it. Uh, Roshan Sagarika, you can have your uh, questions. Yeah, it's already ongoing. So we wanted to like, utilize the time as you can notice, right? Yeah, so, uh, just yeah, yeah. No, we'll, we'll just uh, I think we'll just uh, wrap it up uh, mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever we mm -hmm. want to showcase, we'll just quickly yeah. showcase. Yeah, yeah. once. Yeah, Mohan, just uh, make the NGO request. Yeah, I have made the NGO request uh, with okay, the Russian Foundation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, just uh, donor and donation. Have you made that? Yeah, I, I made the donor with the. Uh, so it's Sagarika on the Sunday name of Sagarika, and then I need to make a donation now on our name. Okay, yeah, please do the donation. Yeah. Before that, I we have to approve that enjoy request without approval, which this which which that that can't be shown here for the donation actually. So.
so this is the approval i was talking about we are just approving it right now so yeah yeah, and now there are, yeah. yeah, now it is showing here. And there are uh, uh, all the, uh, we have all the requests which are for money would only be shown in money and respectively for goods, service, medicals. And uh, money record won't show in goods or anything like that. And here we also have a, a lead check if uh, the data is already there in the, uh, the lead, uh, which we had uh, uh, earlier. In, through some campaign or something. So we won't uh, register the donor from there. We would just take that data and make uh, into a donor registration. So, yeah. Yeah, just make the end your request. And also, uh, we um, I want to just uh, tell you guys once donor registration when uh, Mohan did we we were uh, uh, talking uh, about uh, something else. So uh, there are three types of donors which we have: individual donors, organization donor, and uh, uh, household donor. So individual uh, donor would be a donor uh, would be a donor which is individual. Uh, one person is there who wants to come and donate. Second is uh, organization donor. Organization donor is, for example, uh, some companies there. And uh, uh, so if I have a company, I can uh, th come through an organization and register there. And all of uh, the employees there or any people, uh, uh, all the people working there, they can be added as a context with that. Uh, and third is the household one. Uh, household donor we have used for making the relationships uh, between uh, if uh, for example if uh, uh, my family uh, is my brother is coming my sister is coming to donate so for that we want to maintain the data for the relationship as well so in that case we will make the household donors Now, Roshan, I think I can answer your uh, question. Now, I think you will get the money from Sagar Ekan. Yeah. He is donating to you. Uh, no, you made it between. <laughs> it's it's yeah. And, yeah. Mohan, you. Yeah, I'm trying to say it, but I. Yeah. You can go to. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can go to the homepage and uh, show uh, the five requests which we have. Yeah, yeah. So it will show this amount of money. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. And there is one more feature which we thought about that there can mm -hmm. be some of the NGOs which want funds for some some uh, need. For example, for medical needs, there are they need funds urgently in time limit. So for that, we have provided some five requests would be shown on homepage directly so that users are able to uh, can see it on the homepage directly and they, uh, it, it would just take two clicks and the donation would be done here. So for that, we are providing these five requests here, just to make some donation here. So yes, from here only one click, uh, this would ask the information. Smriti and Sagarika, you know, right, the amount of money that you have to send. And I'll share my phone number, UPI. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Smriti is becoming, being, being shown as more generous. Yes. So, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She has donated to midday meal. And it is the bar which we are showing that how much money has been donated. So earlier it was less and now it has increased. But I didn't receive any confirmation. I only got the first one when you registered my foundation. But when Sagarika made the contribution or when Smithy made the contribution, I didn't receive any notification that 
uh, they've contributed to my request. Yeah, uh, actually, right now, uh, what we are sending email alerts, we are sending it to uh, when the NGO is making uh, re getting registered. Uh, second, when a donor is uh, making donation, uh, that time we are sending these uh, two mails right now. And uh, uh, and yeah, saying, we are the donor, the donor made some contribution. I am not. I didn't receive. receive any yeah, money. yeah. Part of on part of NGO, we are not sending to NGO right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To oh. uh, to donor, it would go right now. It is in place. Yeah, but we can uh, do that as well. That's true. Yeah. Um, otherwise, Rosh doesn't know that I got money. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's true. Website looks good. Thank you. There's a feel of uh, so Yes, these are the things, and. Uh, so all of all of the processing which we have, uh, we will handle uh, through all of uh, these tabs, and we have segregated the NGO and NGO details. Uh, so like that. Mohan, can you go to? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a minute. I'm yeah. facing an issue with uh, this Zoom overlapping it over me. Just so I'm just. Just stop okay. and listen. Meanwhile, yeah. can I ask a question in the interest yeah. of time? Uh, so you, I think Jay Prakash, you did mention about donor management being used here. And I want to ask you, do you guys know Salesforce to an extent has certain capabilities of handling all that you talked about? But I did come across, like you you guys did show you uh, an object or diagram which include custom objects as well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, without going too deep into the answer, just sort of curious, are you aware to yes. what extent you can use uh, those donor management cap capabilities given by Salesforce? Yeah. Uh, in the Salesforce, there are the NTP, NTC, uh, CP is there, uh, means uh, like that only. So that they uh, NPSP. NPSP. NPSP, yeah. huh? NPSP. NPSP. So they uh, did everything in there only. Means uh, they have package. If you right. install that package, so everything is there. All the trigger and uh, every function, every, everything is there. So basically, yeah. but we are using here our. Uh, means uh, we are we are not using that uh, npsp we are why? using only your, yeah why are you not? what one why are you not using it when you are building okay. on Salesforce, why are you not using it yeah so just because of that only uh, means uh, we are using our own uh, platform means uh, we are cre we created only own platform so in the in that platform we are uh, means segregated in npsp there are uh, uh, there are there are all the packages and all the things but uh, but, uh, but the thing is that what? i think that npsp is a paid version as well we need to pay some money and here we are doing on developer org uh, so we have implemented it but we can use it and do it one of the functionality we have seen there this relationship thing is there only uh, in uh, NPSP that we can form a relationship between uh, uh, the donors which are there. So we have taken that that thing from there and implemented into our project to make it uh, work like that. But yes, the whole of thing, uh, when we take it from NP NPSP, uh, some of the things would be predefined and it would help us more. But yes, right now, uh, project we had to make in developer also, we have done that. Okay, so I want to tell you something, guys, so yeah. for your education. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in general, when you're using a platform, you try and use what is available there. Because if you are thinking of the end user as a, as a, as a as an NGO who would want to come and use this application, or or an NGA NGO aggregator who's dealing with multiple uh, don donors and donation people, NGOs who need donations would would want to pay less and use more. So NPSP is a very good solution, uh, and it's relatively uh, much cheaper than any other Salesforce license that is available out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And and when you use developer, org, I need to also probably educate on this developer edition. You are building, you can use, you can build it. It's good. But if you are thinking it can be actually used, uh, technically you're not supposed to use it. So this is good for practice from a developer perspective. But if you really want, let's say Roshan really has a foundation, Roshan is not supposed to use a developer edition to actually go and use it. To collect yeah. donation, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, so I was telling you that uh, you cannot actually put it to a business use case. Yeah, that's uh, true. On on um, as per the guidelines given by Salesforce. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, 
I think uh, that so, was the question. And the other biggest question all this Avarika asked about the 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 actual problem solving of authenticity, which you answered already. Sorry, go, go ahead, Aswati, you were saying something. No, uh, no. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, we just had a little bit of uh, some things to show. So, that, so, yeah, that I was saying. Just... Okay. Okay. So, I thought you showed yeah. that part of the word. Yeah. Uh, so we have so we have also enabled the email to case. So this is the email ID. So which if we send an email, will case will get created. <clears throat> and also uh, we have implemented the chart part for the yeah, say, please continue. Yeah. Okay. In addition, in addition to using the email to case for managing the customer inquiries, we have to incorporate a chart board to facilitate the rising and handling the cases. Uh, this is mean that uh, this is mean that uh, if a if a donor a donor or NGO or a donation management system encounters any issues, uh, they can directly connect with our uh, service center uh, through the chatbot. Uh, next. Uh, yeah. yeah. So here uh, we are using survey Salesforce uh, predefined uh, Salesforce service to effectively engage the both the NGOs and the and the donor. When the NGO reaches the, its fundraising goal, uh, a survey is automatically sent to the uh, NGO by using the flows. We are using here flows to uh, gather the feedback information. How the funds will utilize? Uh, can you please show? Uh, these are the uh, these are some questions we are put there in the NGO uh, and donor as well. Additionally, once a donor has donated, they will uh, they will receive a survey form. To provide the feedback on their donation experience, yeah. And uh, this is the analyze. We are analyzing uh, means for what, uh, for which questions we have get. Yeah. All of the responses would be here. Oh, yes. So yeah, yes. and uh, in conclusion, I would just say that uh, donation. I, I see it as that, that donation is just uh, like uh, throwing a stone into the pond and it would make ripple effects. It's not, not just about uh, a person who is getting the donation. It's also about uh, the positive impact which would uh, get created on the donor when they donate. And also it would also shape uh, the generations to come. If uh, it goes into a, uh, into a good manner, it would really shape uh, generations to come. Thank you. Yes, so, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so now I think we should have a hard stop because next presentation is also a little long and uh, then they will not get the appropriate time. I think I think just one thing I would want to uh, tell you guys. Next time you present, just reverse your presentation. First start with your website and everything and then go to your deck and technical details, okay? Okay. Yeah, uh, thank yeah. you, Sahiba, for uh, yeah. pointing it out. And we were actually thinking about the same, actually. But uh, uh, as we were told that uh, presentation and this, we were actually discussing about it and then went with the... No, yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, this, this is a very... Uh, yeah, you're, you. you're presenting your app. Uh, you know, technically how you, you know, achieve it is the secondary thing. As an end user, the first thing is... Um, uh, what about, what's all in the app and uh, what is my experience as a donor? What is my experience as an NGO? Uh, so that's how your presentations should go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. And my final one uh, conclusion setting this statement is, I think uh, I told you about, it, 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 there's a lot of interesting thing, but what you've done is you've used good amount to do good, good extent all the Salesforce capabilities from a custom perspective and, and put it to use. So thumbs up to you on that front. But from a from a from a from a hackathon perspective, I think yeah. From a Salesforce perspective, yes, there's a, a lot of reusability that could have been done. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um. So Rohit has been waiting for long. He has also made a presentation in detail. So Rohit, uh, all the time is yours. Maybe we can skip the FAQ also, but yeah, it's all your time. So here's also a long presentation. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, Smriti. Uh, I hope I'm audible here. So good morning and good evening, everyone. My name is Rohit Kumar Asre, but you can call me Rohit. 
I'm basically from uh, Amravati, but now I'm staying in Pune and uh, I have total four years of experience as a Salesforce developer. Currently, I'm working at Infosys and speaking about my hobbies, I love exploring new technologies and um, also playing video games. So that's why I have this RGB headphone here right near. Uh, so apart from myself, let's talk about my project here. It's a very interesting project I have built and I'm excited to show you guys. And I definitely want to say thank you so much, uh, Roshan and Sagarika for uh, for your time and joining the session and also Smriti and the team for organizing this whole hackathon. It's a very big thing. So thank you so much for the opportunity here. Uh, let me share my screen here for the PPT. Uh, did you mention the amount of experience? Sorry, Smriti. Uh, did you mention about the experience in the plugin app? Some little bit more about that and your YouTubing. I'm uh, yeah, I actually, I forgot about my uh, other things also. <laughs> so I, I do spend uh, time exploring, like I love to explore things and uh, whatever my experience is there, I love to share on my YouTube channel. So I have YouTube channel uh, for Salesforce where I just share whatever the problems I face, whatever uh, things I don't have to teach in my KT all the time to my junior. So I just upload a video so they can watch it. And uh, I do have a blog where I share other things than Salesforce. So I'll talk about those maybe. Uh, my channel name is that Salesforce guy. That Salesforce. Uh, guy. Yeah. With Salesforce yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> this this Salesforce guy. Yeah. And so, the plugin you have built. I yeah I did build a plugin. That's again uh, one of the features in the Salesforce tool, uh, toolkit. I I do love uh, doing automations. So that's one of uh, part like key part here. I have built also Chrome extension as well. It's a Chrome extension for Sockel queries mostly. So you can. Uh, for support people mostly. I'll talk about that as well. Like whenever we have time, Smithy, we, I'll, I'll definitely go through all these things if we have time. Okay. We'll have time. Don't worry. Okay. 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 Great. Okay. So uh, my project title is Salesforce Developer Toolkit here. As you can see, uh, I, before going to the technical part, I'd like to go, uh, what is the social impact? Because the hackathon theme is social impact here. So how this uh, developer toolkit uh, is going to impact socially here? So um, as a developer, okay, uh, and my with my team also, uh, as a Salesforce developer, you have to work on a lot of things every single day. And now Salesforce is moving to low code or no code platform. So a lot of projects nowadays, they are using Omni Studio, Velocity, and um, all these Omni Studio components. If you talk about, we have integration processor, we have data raptors, we have flex cards, uh, Omni scripts, all these components are there and they use JSON. Uh, for input as well as output. So you have to play with a lot of JSON there, JSON data, and you have to read that JSON data. Again, every single Salesforce project has API integrations. Again, if you are using um, REST APIs, you are using JSON there, and you have to read the JSON. Apart from this, now every no, not a single project is uh, complete without uh, complex functionalities that we built with Apex, or even, even LWC. So you are gonna play with a lot of Apex, and if there is any defect, or if you want to check the data, you are playing with debug logs. You have to read a lot of debug logs. And last but not least, you you do have, if you have Apex classes, you have to write test classes also. So for that, uh, you have to manage all your test classes, test suits, whatever you have. Again, these are just four basic examples I'm giving today, but there are lots of lots of um, uh, engagement that a Salesforce developer has to do in every every single day. And uh, as a Salesforce developer, you should always do things faster, better, and efficiently. So for that, we definitely have lots of tools which are available online. For example, the JSON uh, one I was talking about, we have uh, something called JSON Beautifier. So there are lots of tools available online. This one is called Beautify. And uh, we definitely use a lot of Chrome extensions for uh, doing things faster and better. But whenever you are working, um, with this extensions and tools, we face some problems. As a Salesforce developer, I personally have faced a lot of problems, my teammates as well as um, colleagues. So I, these problems basically are pretty normal problems, but very important problems. Now, what these problems are? Uh, first of all, there is no access to the tools because uh, whenever you are working in a client environment, let's say you have a VM, or even right now at Infosys, we literally cannot browse any external URL which is blacklisted. So I cannot browse those JSON beautify tools there. Uh, so I don't have any any tool to beautify my JSON. And this is just one, one problem. And there are tons of problems by that because uh, they have blacklisted most of the tools. And um, 
also uh, if you are playing with a very confidential data let's say it's a financial service cloud or there are different different obviously projects uh, are their industries basically so if you are working with a financial or fintech whatever you name it ideally you should not expose this data to any online tool so there is a high risk there when you are playing with these tools also and uh, apart from this there is obviously less scope for automation because all these tools are built by some other people out there and you cannot change it unless and until it is open source you basically cannot request for any modification so let's go for automation specifically when you are working for a project and you want to build a project specific automation and last but not least there is no scope for uh, for uh, collaborative platform also because right now literally i i mean we have to share this data whatever data we uh, do my colleagues still send me teams messages and outlook and uh, pretty much there is no platform right here where I can share my data, whether it is a big request, JSON request or Apex code or any kind of thing. So these are the basic problems. Again, there are lots of problems out there, but these are the main problems that I'm focusing today. Now, uh, if I am facing this problem, if my colleagues are facing this problem, definitely there are lots of uh, Salesforce teams out there, lots of companies, and uh, they are they must be facing this problem as well. So this is a global scale impact, and most of these issues are um, definitely we can solve these issues by Salesforce Developer Toolkit. So the Salesforce Developer Toolkit is nothing but a set of all these tools which um, are available out there, but enhanced toolkits also, enhanced tools. So I have added some extra features there and uh, this toolkit can be used by Salesforce developers as well as testers. I'm gonna talk about the testing part also uh, because as a Salesforce developer, when I build something, I have to do a lot of unit testing. Whether it is positive, negative scenario cases, I need a lot of data for that. So I'm gonna talk about that during the demo part. Apart from this, um, this toolkit has two set of tools. Uh, first is generic, which are generic tools just like JSON Beautifier. And then there are something called project specific where you can uh, automate or modify these tools based for your, based on the project also. So this is the basic um, uh, toolkit here. And uh, right here, the text that I'm, I'm using is Laravel for the backend part, as well as MySQL I'm using as a database and Vue.js Tailwind for the front end. And I'm using a lot of Salesforce APIs here, especially tooling APIs I'm using. So this is the tech stack for now. And uh, basically this whole project works, uh, you have Laravel plus Vue as your headless architecture here, and you have Salesforce. You are just sending uh, inbound and outbound requests from this tool to Salesforce. Again, I'm using some AI uh, feature. So in this uh, request, I'm again uh, using some uh, functions which I can, um, use with AI. So I'm going to talk about that in demo as well. So this is the basic headless architecture we have. Now, uh, there are some available tools. I have categorized again these two with Salesforce tools as well as generic tools. So the Salesforce tools are pretty much we can configure for project specific needs and some generic tools as well. So these are the available tools right now. And all these tools basically solve this problem. So I'm going to show you a demo uh, to explain this better. And these are the features which I was talking about, uh, which are not possible. For example, the collaboration part, you want to share the code. I want to store the code for myself, for my team. I can do that. And again, the robust security, you have some SSO login as well as whatever the uh, user that is authorized that can only access this tool. And uh, again, you have scalable scalability here. So if you're good with LWC, you can definitely do anything here in this tool. And again, you have a very good user experience here. I um, I love working on UIs as well. So I have built uh, this considering the best possible user experience. Now, uh, this is just an example here for AI. I have been use, I've been playing with some AI use cases for Salesforce specifically as a developer, but in per, with perspective of developer basically. So this is an example of uh, Google's Gemini AI where I am pasting some uh, debug log response and this uh, AI is analyzing the debug log and telling me, okay, this is something wrong with your code and you should fix this. So it is analyzing and giving me the fix as well. Uh, this is one one uh, user uh, use case. Again, there is another use case where I can just share my image. So here I have shared image of my LWC component and I have given a prompt here. And uh, once I give the prompt, it's gonna give me the response here as well. So this is the response it, it gave. Uh, you have uh, your HTML code, JavaScript, LWC code, basically an Apex code as well. And a little bit explanation how this works. 
So a very interesting use case again here. I'm going to show this in demo as well. And uh, now the main thing is you can host this uh, whole application on your own private server as well as client servers. So again, when you are playing with um, very important uh, client and uh, lots of security compliances are there. So you have to al always take care of all this AI security. If you're using AI, then AI compliances and again, whatever the client security compliances you have. So again, this is a little bit... Uh, gray area for now uh, this um, will so since this uh, app is not sending data to any third party it's just communicating with salesforce so we are under all the salesforce um, uh, security policies for now so i'm going to talk about this uh, security later as well and uh, pretty much for if you consider future scope there are lots of things i, I will say pretty much uh, our mind is limit you can build anything that um, you really think it's possible when you're facing a lot of problems, you can solve these problems by automation. So that's what pretty much I have built here. So uh, these are the future scope. Again, with AI right now, we can do so many things. And uh, again, I want to mention here mobile app also. So let's say I am out somewhere. I just want to use my mobile app and I want to see some stats. I want to delete debug logs or check the debug, whatever I can. So Laravel supports also these APIs, which we can use for our mobile app also. So you can extend this app into mobile also. And uh, pretty much you can create some project specific journeys as well. That's in the future scope. So pretty much, uh, I think that's it uh, as a presentation. I would like to show you guys the demo as well. So any any questions or anything till now, Roshan Sagarika, or you guys want me to share the, uh, show the demo? Yeah, I mean, obviously we should go to okay. the demo, but uh, okay, great. I have one question for sure. So with some of the things that you mentioned, yes, okay. within within a closed uh, like like you mentioned Infosys, right? We me and Sagarika yeah. both have worked there a long time ago. So mm -hmm. within within a setup like that where you have limitations of getting blacklisted, of course. Right? So yeah, uh, my understanding so far is you're talking about a solution which is specific to intra network issues that we face, or you can say through black, through this blacklisting, how do we do it? Because, because otherwise, mm -hmm. most of the use case you mentioned, there are tools in the market, which you would agree, uh, would mm -hmm. meet those needs. Uh, for example, sharing your code. Now you mentioned mm -hmm. a big, I don't, I've not taken a screenshot, but uh, okay. is, is that a correct understanding that I've got so far that publicly, if I still say, uh, mm -hmm. talk about the use cases, they're available more, more of most of them, if not all of them, but it's the, it's the challenge you mentioned at the beginning, which is the mm -hmm. true problem that you're solving, that you're trying to solve here. Am I right in that understanding? Okay, I would like to talk in, with the perspective what uh, the reason why I built this basically. So the main thing is um, there are lots of tools which are blacklisted, let's say, and you're working with the, uh, so one of the projects which, where I worked, we had a VM basically, and we had... Uh, no access to any URL, which was not whitelisted. So only whitelisted URLs we were able to uh, access. So uh, again, most of the time, uh, when you're working with the strict security policies, you are not supposed to, ideally, we are not supposed to even share this data outside in any uh, other uh, website, basically. So you're not supposed to expose this. That's the first thing. So considering secur security, that is one thing. Second thing is uh, this whole project whole toolkit you can actually host on client side itself if there is a server or if you have already server for your own if you're an isv um, even if you are not pretty much all these things uh, you can manage if uh, even if you can run this local local uh, locally also so that is again one thing if you are if you are a developer who wants to use these tools and again it is pretty much automated automation so whatever the tools available online are there, I can pretty much uh, modify them, enhance them as per my own needs. That's what I'm going to show you. Okay, let's, let's yeah. have a look and we'll talk more. Okay, all right, yeah. So basically, again, for this login, uh, you can have a user with a simple username password, and uh, you can also have some SSO login as well. So if your uh, client is providing already their specific IDs, you have client ID. You can automate here with uh, Microsoft, even Google, whatever logins you want. So SSO login is there uh, and you already have a normal login with username, password or email password. And uh, the best part about this tool is that this is a single page application because I'm using Vue.js here, here with Laravel Inertia. So that provides a very seamless experience. I'm not going to reload these pages. You will see uh, most of the pages are not going to get reloaded here. and It's very, very fast. So uh, right now we have Salesforce tools, AI tools, as well as some JSON tools here. 
okay and uh, before going here i just wanted to show how i'm, how I'm authenticating my salesforce with this application right now so if i go into the setting here i have added this uh, connected app setting so we are using connect app here and in connected app there is something called client credentials flow so with that basically i'm using and um, once my id and secret i have pasted here i just have to paste my login url that's it pretty much and the callback url uh, this I have to paste in my connected app. So these are the only settings that you can just you have, have to do and pretty much that's it. You can authenticate this and this, this is going to take some time and uh, it's going to authenticate your org with Salesforce. So whatever the connected app details you put there, it's going to uh, give the authentication request there. So this is how we are going to authenticate. Now, uh, before going into the Salesforce tool, I will just talk about this basic uh, JSON tool. For example, here again, I'm adding some Salesforce feature here also. So my first tool here uh, in JSON, we have the JSON Beautifier. Uh, so here again, it is pretty much same to most of the online tools. But the new feature that I have added here, uh, the enhancement basically that I have done is uh, this auto copy and auto, uh, auto Beautifier also. So let's say I just change any data here, it's going to change in real time. I don't have to click uh, Beautify button all the time. And uh, the thing is, I can basically I'm using again, I'm using all the open source components out there. This is the uh, code editor, uh, code mirror, code editor. Basically, uh, I have added also whatever the features are available online. Pretty much I my first phase was I want to make sure my user is not going to uh, is going to spend very less time on uh, doing interactions. Basically, I want to reduce a lot of clicks here. So that is one thing. And uh, what I was talking about collaborative platform here, I can actually save this record here, whatever the data I have here, I can save this. Right now, this one actually I just searched here. So you can save any data you have and you can share this data with your teammate. So if I just share my link here, so whoever user is authenticated, uh, who has authorization, basically that person can, can access this record here. Again, the interesting feature that I added here is, uh, let's say I have Gate Hospital. So again, I've worked on a lot of projects with Velocity and uh, Omni Studio. So this is one integration procedure that I have here, Gate Hospital. And uh, pretty much I want to, now again, this this problem I have faced many times because when we get data from Mule team or there is any uh, third party uh, team there, uh, I get a lot of requests and then I have to beautify them, read the data and validate it against my integration procedures. So I'm spending a lot of time here first to beautify and then search this integration procedure, which integration procedure is this? And then basically um, hit this um, integration procedure and validate the data. But here, so I have also added one, um, let me go back here. So again, I have a custom um, uh, object here, hospital. So I'm gonna take this name here. So in this IP, whatever the name I pass, is gonna give me the details basically. So we have two options here again you have integration procedure as well as you have raised apis so right now i just want to hit my integration procedure once i hit this i'm gonna get some response here so again uh you uh, this depends on the speed right now it's taking time but uh, it's pretty fast once um, you run this locally as well again it depends on the server right now i hosted this on linux uh, server here so you can see we have the response here whatever the response i'm sending through my integration procedure um, this is just a uh, example that I'm sharing right now. We do have uh, race resources, so you can hit race resource also, and you can get the data. Uh, the main advantage here is that I can always store my request. I can share this with my teammates. I can always beautify them easily, instantly, and I can always hit this request with if I have integration procedure or if I have raised APIs. Now the best part about it is that I can also add, I'll talk about that when I'm gonna show this debug utility here. So let's say I want to debug this also, I can add that feature here also. So I can create a whole specific journey. Let's say if this my API is failing somewhere. So I can add here the debug log and it's gonna generate a debug log. It's gonna give me the debug log there. Maybe it, I will add some AI feature there to analyze it also and it's gonna delete the debug log, the trace flag also. So the whole automation we can do here with this um, uh, framework here. So again, this is a, a JSON beautifier, um, which I was going to show. Again, a very interesting tool that I I really uh, uh, I wanted to show you guys is uh, this JSON validator here. So basically what this JSON validator is going to do is going to validate what are the requests we have. Now, uh, in most of the time when I worked on defects and uh, some builds also, we used to get very, um, I'll say, incorrect request structure. So for example, this is my request structure right now. Let me beautify this real quick. So I have this, uh, I'll just copy this also. 
So I have this JSON validator, for example. Now, most of the time, what we used to do is uh, we used to uh, hit these APIs again. Uh, those people, for, this one is Boolean data type, basically, this is an integer. So they used to send this in string like this. And whatever the logic that we have developed on Salesforce side, that uh, used to fail there because, again, that's not the correct data type. Um, again, we can do uh, we can do all the checks here for every single node. We'll have to do on Salesforce side to check what is the data type there. So that's again uh, kind of um, different thing. So for this, I have created a JSON beautifier. For the JSON beautifier, I need to generate for JSON schema here. So what this JSON uh, validator or generator is going to do uh, is going to check what is the data type you have in your API request or a JSON request. And for example, we can see here these are all the required nodes and every single data type so i can just copy this i can save this let me just save this as jan 20 for example jan 20 request here i can save this now i can go to this json validator here i can search my jan 20 request it's gonna select this as a schema and once i paste this actually i have to paste uh, this one this one i'll paste let's go back here Select this Jan 20 request. Let's go back. Once I submit, now this JSON is valid. But now if I change the data type here, it's going to give me error. Okay, your age must be number, each student must be Boolean here. Even if I remove this, let's say I remove these three nodes here, it's going to give me, okay, you need this property. So very important tool uh, for validating your request. When you're playing with a lot of APIs, this is very important tool. So these are the two, uh, three things. Again, there is, uh, I worked on a lot of raised APIs, basically, uh, inbound raised APIs or outbound raised APIs also. So we have to create uh, wrapper classes. So again, there are lots of tools available online for creating this is admin booster, uh, JSON to Apex. Uh, this one I have created. I want to add further functionality here. How to even add the data to this wrapper here. So again, I'm gonna, that's in future scope basically, but I just wanted to create the base, um, base logic first. That's that's the done, that's here right now. So it's gonna convert this JSON into your wrapper class. And also you'll have the taste class as well. You can change your name here, whatever name you have. And uh, pretty much that's, uh, this is the basic tool right now. Apart from this, there is also some utility tools. I have been working with, with this project right now and we have so many formulas, it's very difficult to, understand where the formal is starting, where the inner formal is starting, where it is ending. So for this, I created this uh, beautification tool, which is going to beautify my formulas. I can at least see, okay, this is where my formula is, uh, uh, this section is starting, ending. So again, this is a very simple formula right here. There are very big formulas that I have seen in my uh, project. Uh, especially in Omni Studio components, when there are conditional blocks, basically. Especially when you have bad admins. Or three uh, I I will uh, I agree with that. Uh, again, this is a comma inserted. So the extension that Smriti was talking about, this is the extension which I have created. So what uh, I I also worked in production support, uh, and we used to get a lot of Excel data uh, data in Excel sheets, and uh, we used to write a lot of queries there. And uh, whenever you are uh, having the Excel uh, data in Excel sheet in the in the columns, uh, you have to use concatenation and uh, add the commas for the in clause in the query. So I was like tired because I don't want to write formulas all the time. I can just automate this with some simple JavaScript. So I created this uh, extension here where I can just paste the data. So I'm, same thing I have added here, by the way. So once I once you copy paste your whole Excel column here, you can just uh, hit the submit button and you have all the commas and inverted commas. So you can put this into your query and you can get the data. So very helpful for people who are into support, mostly want to run a lot of data in the queries. Uh, again, uh, diff checker, very, very important tool, especially when you have to compare a code or a request. Um, uh, so again, a basic tool which I have added here. Apart from this, I was talking about the testing part. So this one is random data generator. Now in every single project, when you are going to do some unit testing, you have to create a lot of data. Personally, the project that I'm working on, we have like 10, 15 objects and for all these objects, we have to create data. And it's very difficult to go to account, create the account, then create the order, create subscription, all these um, related even related records. And all these records, they need unique unique values, basically. So it's very difficult to create the data when there is a bulk quantity. So I had one case where I was working on a build where I had like 15 plus scenarios. And I was like, I don't want to do all these things manually. So how can I automate it? So I... Uh, 
I was I actually created that specific tool for project one, but this one is different here because um, that one I created on a native JavaScript uh, one. But this one here, you have complete randomized data. For example, you can if I refresh the data, we can see we have all this now. Again, this is a Apex code here, and this is a JSON. So if I'm hitting API, I can generate unlimited random data with unlimited whatever data types you you name it. Uh, you want uh, demographics, you want any uh, any details about any person. So here I'm using Faker.js, which is very interesting library. And it has a wide range of, uh, you know, data, which you can use in your, um, uh, in your records, basically. So this is going to generate a lot of data. Again, I haven't added here a button to execute this code. I'm going to show you guys that into uh, the Salesforce tools here. So again, you have, you can generate unlimited Apex codes here. If you have the specific, again, you have to understand the model here that you can set here also. Uh, same goes for your request also. So you can modify this, all these things. So these are all the uh, generic tools here right now. Let's move toward the Salesforce uh, code here. So again, I'll just copy this for now. And the first tool which I have added here is the, uh, hitting the anonymous apex basically so again most of the projects where i worked in sometimes developer console lacks a lot the current project where i'm working right now it's velocity project and developer console is laggy pretty much so i have to use vs code all the time and in vs code also i have to use the sfdx again this is i'm not really trying to replace all these things i'm trying to build some extra enhancement on that and i want to make sure key i uh, I don't have to, for example, with VS code, I can also execute the Apex code, uh, this one, but I will have to use uh, SFDX update, all these things. And every developer should basically have this one. This was my first video, by the way, on my YouTube. So for here right now, I can save this. The, the next feature which I wanted to show is you can save this Apex code and you can share this Apex code, the same feature that I have right here. So let's make it Jan 20 Apex code here. And I can just search this, uh, Giant 20 Apex code. I will have a URL here. Right now I haven't added that uh, feature to copy, but you can actually share this URL and anyone who has access will be able to execute this code. So people, especially DevOps team, maybe if uh, there are lots of scripts they have to run after deployment, before deployment. So you can always store this code. You can always hit this. Again, you can have some pick list uh, uh, component here or you can have the set of buttons. Let's say I want to hit this um apex code every single day i can just create a one specific button for that also so this is just a uh, just a poc phase right now so if i execute this it's gonna create a new uh, account here and the associated contact with that and um, again i have read the feature to show debug only okay now this one is the basic code uh, uh, which is going to create data and i had i purposely created one method which is going to show me error also so i added now the ai feature also in this let me execute this also now whenever you are going to execute the code if you face any problems, you have to see all these, you know, debug log and to refer, okay, this is the exception that I'm getting. But here you'll find the error message and stack trace right here on the UI itself. And it's gonna give you stack trace, of course, where you can uh, check this. So uh, this method I'm purposely breaking because one of the queries, I did not uh, enter this billing city. So S object row was retrieved via SOQL. Probably everyone knows here what this uh, issue is. So um, again, here I have added this show debug only again. Uh, this is gonna show me the debug user debug also, which is not present at the moment, but also it is going to show you what is the what are the errors are there also. And I have added this AI feature, which is going to give me some analysis also. So again, here I'm using uh, Google's Gemini AI right now. You can use any AI, whatever AI uh, you uh, have present with you. So open AI or other AIs also you can use. Now here, this uh, yeah. is the response from yeah. Rohit, have you used really big debug logs and uh, tested with this? I don't actually have data, but I got your point because there are lots of uh, pretty big debug logs. Um, maybe like 10 so MB something you're talking about. So in actual scenarios, right? right? See, yeah. Uh, yeah. this is a very impressive uh, feature that you have showed because as a hands-on people, we have seen that mm -hmm. It's so difficult to, you know, um, traverse through the debug log and find what yeah. the error is and try to resolve yeah. it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, mm -hmm. what you need to do is you need to test if it is really able to handle that big of a, like a debug log. What is the limit? Because it should not like... Um, okay, okay. Okay, uh, like stop reading at a certain level and say that mm. it didn't find any errors, but actual... Reason is it was mm. not able to read the entire debug log. 
Okay, right? understood. So yeah. I think uh, if uh, upon like rigorous testing, if you really find that it is able to like mm -hmm. traverse through the entire debug log, then this would mm -hmm. be a really uh, great feature yeah. that would be helpful to the community. Correct. So now Sagarika here, there is there are two things. Basically, right now I'm sending the whole debug log. It depends on how many tokens your AI is going to accept. So I have two AIs right now. There is something called Cohort AI also. This accepts very less tokens, but this G Google Gemini AI, this accepts around 33,000 something tokens. So it again depends on the AI part or else what you can do is I will show you the debug log parser also where you can send limited data and for the analysis basically. So definitely I'll taste this with the uh, uh, high, uh, like more data. Uh, I have to create a very complex code also for that. Um, but just, this is just a POC again. Uh, we can enhance this and optimize this as per our needs. Uh, so I'll definitely. I think uh, your point that. Is something, uh, what I understand from Rohit is it's mm -hmm. this tool is more of an integration with what AI can do. So I think yeah. if if we have a better license of Gemini and if, if Gemini can do more without mm -hmm. irrespective of how big a log is, this tool should be able to do. Is that a correct understanding, Rohit? That is one AI feature is there, but my main. Uh, interest here is that I want to access this, whatever the debug data is there, I want to access that. And I want to, right now I can execute this in VS code, but I don't have this option also in VS code to see the uh, debug, uh, user debug basically. That's one thing. And uh, in when I go with uh, developer console, most of the time developer console is pretty much slow when you are rendering, uh, when you have a lot of people there. But this is the whole headless architecture here. Um, and you have, uh, this is running on browser itself on client side. So it is very, very fast because every communication that we are doing, we are doing with the APIs only here. And the best part is you can share, like I was talking about uh, the collaboration platform, you can share. So all the features that are not present on Salesforce or on VS code, um, I am not trying to replace all these uh, platforms. Obviously I'm trying to build the next uh, feature, new features on that enhancements basically. So that's my goal. So again, uh, I can add, uh, like I mentioned, we can have different, different scripts here that we have to execute all the time. Uh, as per our project needs, we can add all this data. So that's the case. So can we say that yeah. your tool is a consolidated and enhanced version yeah. of like different tools that we have available for the developers? Yes, pretty much uh, that's the case. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Your tool looks really neat uh, and very user friendly, but at the same time, yeah. um, mm -hmm. like what is the reason behind using uh, Laravel or Vue.js or yeah. you know, Tailwind CSS? Because they're all again, yeah. uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you're going away from Salesforce, right? Uh, is there uh, any reason that you but, you were not even uh, is... using Salesforce, mm -hmm. like LWCs okay. and SLDS mm -hmm. and everything? Yeah, so pretty much if I go with LWC and if I go with Salesforce, the core Salesforce here, I have been using some different libraries also. For example, this code editor here. And uh, pretty much all these libraries I will have to install. Uh, again, I am also thinking about app exchange where everything will be on Salesforce. But the advantage of this uh, uh, Laravel and Vue.js is pretty fast and it is completely headless. So you can do every single thing, what every single possible enhancement uh, with the third party packages also. For example, the um, this one is the core editor I'm using. Again, I would like to show you core editor for the test coverage also. That is the core editor which is being used in VS Code itself. So you have uh, very high scalability options and you can pretty much do anything. So again, uh, this Vuja is also very easy if anyone is good with JavaScript, specifically LWC, that person can definitely do it. So it's, it's not at all about uh, yeah, easy, yeah. but uh, okay. you know, uh, in in mm -hmm. this long experience, like we have seen that uh, clients or uh, the teams are mm -hmm. not ready to allow when you're going away from Salesforce, right? As soon as mm -hmm. they see different frameworks and CSS, they're not okay. really they they have an apprehension about you know the security mm -hmm. and uh, you know come so even yeah. though if uh, the compliance regulations, everything yeah. comes into picture, you know, the, yeah, yeah. It, it just raises the eyebrows and, you know, you correct, get correct. concerned.
things. Correct. So it's about the adoption of your mm. tool. Your tool is so yeah. good, but it's about the adoption of the tool as well, right? If mm. everyone has to yeah. use it, then mm -hmm. they need to first trust it, right? Yeah. yeah. That there is no way that, uh, you know, uh, there is no... So no Sagarika, the ba base example, I, or anything. correct, correct. I totally understand your point. But the base example I can give you is Workbench. It is developed definitely by Salesforce. But again, it's a, it is a third party tool, basically. Uh, so pretty much we can consider these, this is kind of uh, that area. And probably I might need help in this case also about security compliances. Um, but the, the base thing I can say right now is this whole project, which is uh, built on Laravel and Vue.js, you can simply host on client server because the, all the communications that is happening, this is happening from this this server to Salesforce only. It's not, uh, unless and until it is AI, it's not sending data to any third party tool. And with the uh, security point of view, Laravel has very strong security policies and uh, strong security framework actually. So without login or without anything, you cannot access uh, all the authenticated pages here. So you can have public pages, you can have uh, private pages. In pages essence, also. what you're saying, yeah. I think that was my one statement. So as, as we come to yeah. the last five minutes of this, I want to raise it uh, yeah. because you talk about security. So and, and, and in the essence, we're saying, hey, this can be taken to Infosys mm -hmm. through the, and, and pass through their blacklisting, blast, blacklisted sites Correct. and uh, give those thousands of people the advantage of all these tools, which otherwise they're missing out on because of this blacklisting, as well as some extra additional features that you built using those libraries and the mm. integrations, like the enhancement Correct. of, let's say, Correct. the debug, debugging part or the comma, in, comma inserter, you said. So yes. so those are like little nuggets that you've added. Is that a right statement to make that this is, the, 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 the biggest essence is, hey, I can take this to the Infosys yeah. network. Correct. Any Correct. Network because of Correct. my security compliance which is yet to be checked that that's your mm. that's your goal but do you know that for sure already do you know okay these are mm -hmm. the compliances that is make essentially blacklisting is xyz tools and the ones which i have used are going to pass through this do you know that already or i, I is it still a question mark yeah, so again, again all every client definitely has their different compliances po compliance policies but again i have spoken with few people at infosys also uh, on practice level so pretty much uh, this can be utilized uh, again it depend uh, depends on if you want to uh, deploy this on infosys platform or you want to deploy this on the uh, client uh, environment also so pretty much what I have built here, it's uh, definitely, we can deploy this and- uh, okay. We can do private, yeah, public, yeah, yeah, you mentioned yeah, that. But my, yeah, my yeah. question is very specific, like, have yeah. you identified, like you mentioned, you spoke to a few people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you obviously, every client has a different needs, every company might have a different mm -hmm. set of Correct. policies. But Correct. you still have some primary ones, like there's, there's some sites mm -hmm. which you go to any, like go to top quality mm -hmm. MNCs in the world, you know, these are going to be blocked for sure any given day. And there are certain parameters which are actually doing mm -hmm. that. That's my question. Yeah. Do you have anything listed or identified to a certain extent? I, I, I have from Infosys as well as Persistent, where we had, in Persistent, we had VM basically. Uh, everything we used to do on VM only. And uh, in Infosys also, we have uh, pretty much most of the tools which are blacklisted. So that I haven't uh, uh, mentioned here in the PPT at the moment, but right. pretty All much. Right. Yeah. I'll ask you the question in a different way. So okay. once you're... Yes. Uh, tool is out of prototyping, would mm -hmm. you be able to successfully use this on VM? Yes, definitely. So whatever without any objections. Uh, definitely without even objection also, because my whole framework right now, which I've built here is completely safe considering Laravel policy. Again, whoever uh, compliance manager or com auditor is there, definitely can check all these things. Uh, this is where I lack some experience, by the way. Um, that I actually don't know uh, what are the, uh, again, it, it depends on every single project, like I mentioned, um, but I, I can guarantee that there are no, nothing, no backdoors or nothing. Like if you're going there, uh, pretty much safe tool to use all you need is basically a server there to host this. That's it. And definitely you can yeah, use this. You can, you can, you can enhance that... this. Yeah, that is an area that you need to actually research and be yeah. prepared next time that these are okay. usually the things, red mm -hmm. flags that any company yeah. would, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind of have. And my tool is pretty much 
passing six of eight yeah. or mm. <laughs> seven okay. of ten or something understood. you know you should understood. already be prepared okay. that these are the usual red flags and my mm -hmm. tool is already passing most of the red flags okay and okay. is it going to be like free or a paid tool uh, that i haven't uh, really decided i want to make this accessible to pretty much everyone um yeah but so it that, is on yeah. salesforce and uh, it, i mean it's How completely it uh, uh yeah i mean it, it totally depends um, again uh, that part i haven't really decided sagarika yet so i'm still gonna my main objective here is i want to build some mvp first here which um, and then maybe think about uh, for now we'll assume uh, it is social because we are part of social uh, uh, impact hackathon for now we'll yeah. assume it as a as a free one okay let's 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 have it that way yeah so i'll just explain all if we have uh, we have very limited time i'll i'll hardly take 5 minutes explaining Most the rest of the tools more, maybe. maybe okay so this one is the debug utility again uh, all the developers we have to work on a lot of debug logs here so most oh, wait, of the time, wait, yeah. Wait, yeah so off, like we actually have a next, uh, next lot already scheduled, and like uh, okay. other panelists okay. are also. So maybe like quickly, if you can wrap up. Okay, I'll just take maybe two minutes then. So this uh, with this uh, debug utility, you can search again. I'm going to add a feature to search inside debug log body. But here, let's say I want to search uh, a specific operation or uh, even I'm going to get uh, the error here and I can definitely see my debug log. Let's see if I open this one, not this one, actually, my bad. If I open this one, I can definitely see my debug logs and also I can uh, parse this debug log data. This is a very interesting feature, which I wanted to show you guys. So most of the time when we read debug log, it is difficult to, uh, when let's say you don't put your debug here, user debug, this one, okay. System or debug if you don't put it, but there is something called variable assignment, like most people know. So with this also, you can actually search, okay, my data is getting assigned to some place here. So for example, this one, this is an ID here. So I can see, I can search everything. So you can read these debug logs pretty easily, pretty fast. So this one is the debug uh, log parser and uh, Smurti, the one I was talking about the tokens there, you can have very limited data like this and you can pass this to AI. Let's say when you have 10 MB of debug log right there, you have huge data, you can minimize the data based on the, again, it's going to be a different thing, but you can reduce the data. You can, uh, you can read the data here and that data you can pass to the AI. Again, here I have added another feature in this debug utility, one click trace flag. So if I hit this button here, it's gonna create my trace flag. Usually if you go to Salesforce, you have to open the uh, trace flag like this and you have to select your user here, you have to select the entity type, you have to select the start date, end date, that again, lot of clicks there. Here you will have every single thing pre-configured, uh, whatever the user is authenticated there. And you can also extend your time here with 30 minutes. Um, so these are the things I added. Again, the most important feature that I added is delete all. You can delete all the debug logs right here. Uh, debug log parser, same thing which I explained here. Test coverage, again, very um, uh, important tool. Uh, here you can find all the coverages right here. You can search all your test class, uh, your main classes basically. You can uh, search whatever coverage, every single thing that you see, all the parameters, you can search this. Uh, you can also see all your test classes which are present here. You can run all these test classes also. And uh, also, by the way, this is a light uh, dark mode um, is there also for this to the whole toolkit I built with the dark mode. Thanks to Tailwind CSS. Uh, uh, I really have to stop you because uh, okay. uh, next panelists are waiting. Uh, uh, okay. We have All the right. main features, right? So we are good. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, based okay. on that, they can judge. Actually, the next panelists okay. are waiting. They are online. We are already two minutes past. So we okay. Have to... Okay. Okay. I'm sorry for that. Thanks, Roy. No, it's no. all cool. Yeah. Yeah. Video game vibes. Yeah. We'll 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 keep chatting. Thanks, Smriti, yeah. and thanks for organizing this. Everybody, Thank please. You. Thank you so much. LinkedIn, I think we can continue our so feedback on on link. It was an impressive tool, Rohit. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot, Sagarik and Roshan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Bye, Swati, Thank you everyone. Manan, Sudanshu, Jay Prakash, Roy, Bye, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Hey, bye, Rasan. Thank you. It was an honor to be in the call with you. <laughs> Let's talk more on LinkedIn. See you. Okay. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you, Sagarika. Thank you.